All right, this is a convening community call uh, and it's Friday, March 25th, 2022. We're getting close to the end of March. That is just nuts. Um, and it's lovely to have you here. Uh, I kind of want to hand off to Stacy to just sort of restate a little bit of the thinking that, that led to this call and then head back in. Okay. Well, the idea of this call was, you know, seeing so much energy around some of the subjects that come up on the OGM mailing list to see if there was a way that we could better organize and schedule those calls. Um, but I really wanted to, I really wanted to get a better sense of what would work for you. Like what would, you know, what would, what would you find a value in terms of scheduling or help me out? <laughs> sort of Co-presence. Um, and, and also many of you have put in a whole bunch of effort uh, to either shepherd the cats or add content or whatever, like in, into OGM and, and all the affiliated uh, groups. Um, so I think, I think we share a, a passion and interest in making this work better. And a, a piece of this is just about what would work well. And, and I will speak for Stacy uh, for a moment and she will correct me because I will be wrong. Um, uh, Stacy values seeing heads and eyes and features and expressions over tippity tap, tippity tap, oops, play more. Um, and so, uh, hi Grace, <clears throat> we're just, just getting rolling. Um, and so I, th I think that uh, Stacy would love for there to be more ability to, to connect, I guess, in the Zooms, because that's sort of our default medium at this point for, for seeing each other's faces. Uh, but if there was a standing Zoom that was open 24-7, Stacy would be really happy because then it'd be like, hey, you go to the coffee shop or the bar and you see who's there and you strike up a conversation. Wouldn't that be cool? So, so that's kind of part of the, part of the mix, maybe. I don't know exactly how you. Yeah, how that's we, not the craziest idea. It's it's not. It's not. I'm actually uh, putting that together anyway. Well, there we go. See, it's done. That was so quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> calls over. Yeah, and I, I remember. I remember talking about about how OGM should work like a year ago, and and that notion came up. It was like if you think it's like the church, you know, there are people who just want to walk into the church, even if they're bone there there's going to be one other person works problem is the drinks at the bar in the church are not very good well <laughs> I'm, I'm we'll sorry. change that <laughs> although although i will say um i attended my aunt's 50th jubilee my aunt was a religious sister of mercy and i've slept in a convent multiple nights because i visited her in janesville wisconsin which also happens to be home to paul ryan but let's ignore that for a second uh, that was before, way before I knew Paul Ryan existed. He was probably still a teen in, in, in high school at the time. But I, I visited and, and they had this 50th Jubilee and the party was in the rectory, actually. And we went to the basement of the rectory where there was a pool table. It was basically a man cave. And, and then there was a table with a, in the kitchen, there was a table with a whole bunch of bottles of booze. And Father Max, this very young priest, walks in, pours himself a a glass, a, like a tall boy of scotch with a couple of cubes of scotch and like fills the glass and walks back out to the living room. I'm like, okay, the priest life is different from what I thought it was. Anyway, sorry for the ad. They're drinkers. They are drinkers. They need it to get through or they wouldn't I'm, be able to stay in that <laughs> vocation. <laughs> that's sort of what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I do think that if those of you who are complaining about the drinks and the food at your religious ceremony belong to the wrong religion. <laughs> Should have gone in for them. In my synagogue, there was like, there were there were a couple. It was you know in Israel, and there were a couple of people who were Brits and and Canadians and Scott, and, and like there was a whiskey contest every freaking week. Like who brought the best whiskey? It was it was insane, man. Oh, I just got back from you know, it was good stuff. Awesome. So, so I've actually been talking. I I was actually talking about Peter, as you guys probably are aware. I've been bringing my people over into the matter most. I had a telegram group and I completed this last um, workshop, which I do these six week workshops. And if there's one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be an online chat community manager. This is just not what I want to do. And every time the people are like, oh, but we're going to miss each other, you know? And I'm like, okay. So I had this discussion with Peter and um, what I've been envisioning is a campus. And I'm looking at Topia now. I, 
this week's been really rough. I'm in London um, at, at an Airbnb. I have a friend who's going through a rough time with his business and needs help closing it down and doing all that crap. And so I just like everything got shoved aside um, this week, except for like a really a lot of stout. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> Which is the way you get through shutting down a business. Oh, yes. I went to the pub. I went to the pub last night and then, like I couldn't quite figure out like whose beer was what. And I'm like, oh, I don't know this English pub thing. And the guy next to me goes, don't worry, we're all out of practice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, every pub in town, everything was packed. Wow. And everything was packed. Anyway, so um so um I was talking to him about this idea of having utopia, which would have different areas of discussion, similar, maybe parallel to some of the threads on the mattermost, because they happen to run parallel to my workshop. And that my workshop would start to run on these kind of um you could learn each lesson at the at the pace you wanted and and then come at a certain hour that that was our regular hour and sit at the table for the discussion you wanted. But at other hours, I was thinking about them. There's a crypto commons group that has stuff in the co in common with us, the OGM group. And I was thinking I could have a little office like in the Topia and I would just sit there all day and have like closed office hours, open office hours, take my meetings there. It's cheaper than Zoom. Um, you know, what's the difference? And have that be kind of an open campus. And I really had envisioned that it would be an open campus for all of these different groups that like you guys and other guys and that, and just like the campus, there's a lounge, right? There's the student lounge and you can just go hang out there or you can go to the table for, you know, and you can announce I'm gonna be having this meeting at this time and in this room. Um, so that's really, I've really been thinking that that is, a, 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 and, and the idea of the campus really spoke to me because um, I like doing these workshops and then I like being in a position where people might come back and say, hey, I've got a project. I want to run it by the group like I've done. And you guys have been really generous with me or, you know, I want to, you know, I want to do a few sessions just on whatever it is, NFTs, because that wasn't a thing last year. And all my graduates in my workshop, you know, there wasn't NFTs the first time I ran it. So we're going to do a two session thing on NFTs, you know, so. The idea of like, not that you're there every week, but it's there's there's a continuing education and you come in and you come out and maybe there's the weekly OGM call, which has a totally different nature of it. And yeah, that's what I've been envisioning. I mean, I don't know how many, oh, Ingrid, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking, and I don't know if this is possible because there's so much going on. And every time I go to OGM, people are working on really interesting things is there anywhere that we can, I know that we have these matter most and all this common stuff. Is there some virtual metaverse that we can park things in that we can put all of these incredible projects that people are doing and you can kind of pop in and out? I don't know if that's a crazy idea, but is there something like that? <laughs> so, Rob, do you mind if I answer that before going to you and then Wendy? Okay, um, so a couple things. So Pete's Plex newsletter, um, which, and are you familiar with it? Okay, so just a month ago, rough, uh, maybe a month and a half ago, Pete started a bi-weekly newsletter where he goes around to the different projects. He says, what's new? And then he puts that all into a newsletter and sends that out. And then I, I chatted with him a couple of days ago uh, and I was like, gosh, I sort of wish that was a web page, not just a newsletter, because if it was a web page, we could just go to it and see what projects are up and what's new. And then he said, yeah, I've been in conversations with several people and it kind of needs to be a dashboard. Uh, so then that went back to conversations we've had over time about, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have like an OGM slash other projects dashboard where we could see what's up? And he brought up a prototype he had done in Airtable, of course, and we sort of looked at that and, and we're trying to figure things out. And I don't know where that's gone, but, but kind of forever I've wanted there to be a, what's going on right now? What are the standing calls and where are they? Um, what, what's up with all the different projects? And also, how do I join? Like, if, if there's a project that sounds interesting, how do I enlist? Um, and we don't really have that. Uh, and it kind of needs to be done in some nice open fashion in the way that Massive Wiki tries to architect things, et cetera. Um, Something interactive that we can um, actually, yeah, it's a digital workspace, right? That, that has rooms. I mean, there's a lot of metaverse stuff going on that, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Rob, then Wendy, then Grace. 
Yeah, I guess for me, and I've started a couple of threads in the in the mailing list. Um, I do like being on a call like this and talking to people, but I have fairly limited time to do that. And um, in particular, I have a work conflict when the, the weekly call is on, so I'm rarely on those. Um, so maybe there's a couple of, of streams here. One is the projects that Ingrid, you were just talking about, you know, popping in and on um, different projects and see what's going on. I'm probably more interested in this, the sense making. And I always am left with the feeling with these amazing people on these calls, like, uh, you know, on regenerative agriculture or on uh, even, you know, Ukraine and Russia and, uh, you know, various topics, there are people that have, you know, decades of a head start over me. Um, and I'm, I look to OGM to increase my, um, to try to learn about the nuances of topics that are not coming out in the main, the main media. And so I would, I would like one of these spots to grow a layered nuanced conversation about topics X, Y, and Z that we can all add to. And I, I don't feel like there's a great platform that, that does that. Um, I think I've, in a couple of the chats, I said it's like Miro plus the brain plus, you know, a mind mapping tool or something, something that's a, a sense of place that people know to go there, but you can, at least for me, asynchronously add to that, that knowledge map, if that's what it is. So that's kind of where, where I'm at. And you offered up a very nice beginnings of a proposal to build something like that, that sort of is a, is a platypus between some of those different things, which is great. Which could still be fit the rooms metaphor. I'm not opposed to a rooms type, you know, metaphor. Yeah. Uh, Wendy? Yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of ideas. First, I want to go back to Grace's point about a campus and a, and and Topia. I think um, I've only used Topia once um, as a participant, and I found it really fun. It's just like really, really engaging and fun spot. Um, I also found it a little bit frictionful to fig to like just the navigating to people talking together. You know, like how close do I need to be and who gets the voice of the of the room in the area and stuff is a little bit wonky, but in general, it's so fun. It kind of doesn't matter. So I see that being like a really a really cool step or something to try out maybe for some OGM calls to see see if uh, if that's something that the that the community likes. Um, I'm also hearing a lot of stuff about like two, two, I'm starting to parse things in my mind into two different camps that I think sometimes get interwoven in conversation. One camp is the onboarding process, right? Like I'm new to this community or I haven't been here for a while, or I don't know half the people. I've only met half of them. I don't know what the other half are doing. And somebody just said something interesting to me that all kind of falls in this onboarding. How do I find out more information about X? And for that, we need some semblance of a repository of, you know, that everyone was putting in the dashboard. And then I liked what Rob said too, but then there's the sense-making part. How do I weave something greater from what I know already exists? And um, for me, that can be similar technology, right? Maybe facilitated differently, or the flow is a little different, or um, there's more handling either by the technology or by a person. Um, but I see it being very similar. And I started mapping out some stuff along that. I, I, I don't think OGM is alone by any means in wanting this kind of, it's what I'm hearing everywhere in every conversation. It's such a sticking point because we all get to know each other, but the normal pathways to having richer conversations take a while. <laughs> they take a long time and the, it takes a long time for trust to build. And Jerry, who is in almost all the OGM meetings might know everyone and see how Rob and I should be talking, but Rob and I haven't really met before. So it takes us another nine months. How can we, how we can, we facilitate that so that I recognize, oh no, like Rob really has something that I should be talking to him about next week. Like, let me, how do we get to that 
so that Jerry doesn't have to make sense out of that because as these communities grow and get more complex, Jerry can't possibly be in the middle of all of that, he'll explode. So, <laughs> so how do we help that is what I'm hearing. And then Stacy adds her piece, which is like, and all these rich threads that come and go and, and don't find a home almost to, 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 to get off the screen and into person to person so that the thing that needs to emerge can really emerge. Or if there's a little tension around a topic, it can be, get talked about instead of it exploding on itself or imploding on itself. And all those rich things that OGM is ripe for can, can, can take fruit, flower, sprout, whatever. Yeah, I agree. So, Go ahead. Th there's been a number of times where I've been watching an OGM thread and everybody's, you can sense that everybody's there because they're all typing their responses. And I just want to be able to say, let's go to this room and have this conversation, you know, and then we do get to know each other. Um, and it's right there in real time. And if you can't make it, then the, the email is still there. You can still, you know, contribute there and maybe continue it on. Um, Grace, you had asked for the floor a little while ago. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, you're still muted. I, I just, I, I have this really deep need to say that our AI sucks balls. And the whole language we're using to talk about this is fucking bonkers. Like, wh why are we talking about maps and topologies and directories? It's, it's an AI-empowered newsfeed. It's a social network. It's how do I know that I, I want to know- we knew somebody who world. runs a newsfeed. Social no, but like, news feed. I don't no, know. but you guys, you guys get it, right? And that's what we're up against. We're up against money, which is, you know, my focus. Like, how do we create an alternative to money? And you guys can all be in the how do we make a living? And I'm also in the make, you know, like, I got to make a living, right? You know, and it, it doesn't, it, it's everything's fine. I'm fine. Like, that's, an, I get, I've been having, able to have the privilege to separate this work from my making a living work, and it's very successful for me, but it'll probably merge pretty soon. And money is one infrastructure, but the AI infrastructure and that net social networking infrastructure is really, we haven't even begun in any of our conversations to have an appropriate conversation of what that looks like. An appropriate conversation of how you do AI, for example, just to start is to say, okay, let's map all of these meetings we have, who introduced who to whom, who gave whom um, feedback. You know, like I know that, you know, I know that Rob gave me great feedback, Wendy gave me feedback. Okay, you know, like who are the people? And then did I integrate their feedback into my thing that, you know, they gave me feedback on? Not yet, I'm, but I am working on it. It's very challenging, really good feedback. And, and, um, and Kevin gave me feedback, right? And it's like, okay, now we know that this is a, typical type of match, right? And then Jerry had some feedback session. Who was in the feedback session there? Which of, his, which of the feedback that Jerry wanted on his, on his thing was useful to Jerry, right? And then you've got, you get a couple of those, right? A couple meaning like a hundred. The AI starts to understand how to give you the right matches. That's the conversation to be having, not this, how do we map it and, and you know, not have Jerry's head explode? Um, briefly before passing the mic to Michael, um, what is now holo, a holo chain, holo everything is a splinter piece of the meta currency project, which, uh, Arthur Brock, Eric Harris Braun and Jean-Francois Nubel were working on for some 25 years. And it which still was, doesn't even get to alpha. Which, well, the meta, meta currency project, which they were working on a lot covered a lot of the stuff you just said. It was about how do you track value flowing through systems, you know, ecosystems, human systems, et cetera. And it, it ran really, really deep. And then, and then slicing off a chunk of that and trying to make that actually fly to prove to be really, really hard, as you just said. But, um, but yeah, you're making, you're reminding me of, of efforts to do this kind of thing. It's, it's, it's non-trivial, but it's important. Um, Michael? Yeah, um, I was going to say that that short of building, I'm wondering if there are ways to um, 
you know, I hear, I hear what Grace is saying and I feel like that's what we're, so many of us are building toward and, you know, already doing things in siloed and separate ways. And um, it's frustrating and um, I, you know, my broken record is, can we just make a deal that we're all throwing our stuff in the pot and, you know, doing one thing, but that is really hard in a world where people have to make a living and feel like they have their IP and brand and whatever. But um, I think one thing in the OGM world that we could do um, that Vincent and I were talking about is like have more of a um, simple profile along the kind of a link tree model that that is a, a lingua franca among us that has the links to the things that we're doing and the um, at least the reputation areas that we feel we have something to offer in and that other people could or could not, you know, endorse or add or, you know, just basically tagging ourselves and allowing other people to tag us in some way. And so there's at least some tether to like, oh, I see this conversation going on Mattermost. I see this conversation happening in an email chain. Who are these people? Let me see a picture of that person. Have I met that person in the meeting or not? What, what are the links to their, their thing? You know, what's on their schedule of, you know, they, I mean, it would be, depending on how ambitious we were able to get with this, it would be great to be able to say, oh, you know, this person's a standing attendee of the Weaving the World meetings. Oh, and those are happening at this time. Um, maybe I can join that. Um, but, but I'm, I'm just, you know, putting out there as sort of a first step that we don't have just a little bit more of a digital presence for, for each of us, starting simply, you know, so we can find each other. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say just on a more mundane note is the, the very... Um, the very existence of a schedule for OGM and things OGM seems like something that, like, if it were if it were if it were put in a Google Calendar, and I hate to say Google, but you know, if it were put in some kind of calendar, and you could subscribe to that calendar, um, that seems like a pretty low lift, and you could decide who was, you know, who had the access to put items on that calendar and who didn't, but at least we'd know, like there are meetings that I was attending regularly and I don't know exactly when they moved to, so I haven't been attending them and there's no place to check. And so I don't go and, you know. Yeah, uh, on that very last item, just a couple of pragmatic things. Early in OGM, I created an OGM calendar and started adding people to the, and actually the reason I like uh, Google Groups is that I use Google Groups as an access control list. So I would make the OGM list, the Google Group, be the attendee to the calendar event. That turned out to, I, I don't remember the problems it caused, but it was causing double entries and a whole bunch of feedback and a bunch of stuff that wasn't really working. So I took it down. I, if, I, if, if some black belt Google Calendar user were to say, hey, here's the best way to do that, I would like jump on it and we could then share the calendar and it would be great. I'd have no trouble with that at all. But I kind of tried and failed early on and I'm not, not good enough at, at doing that kind of thing. Um, but also this idea of who's in the room and what do they care about goes back to the first months of OGM. <clears throat> like we wanted this forever. And I'll say that Vincent and Trove are an attempt that's gotten pretty far down the road to solve some piece of that, right? And I'm, I haven't been on the flotilla calls uh, but, you know, Flotilla is trying to, yeah, uh, Grace is saying this feels like Flotilla and, and, and I'm like, yep, we're sort of talking about how, to, how do we blend and merge the tools. <clears throat> and we're having a surprisingly technical conversation here. Um, we, we've gone to the tools and the platforms pretty quickly. Um, Wendy, then Ingrid.
Yes, I was muted. Um, I, yeah, I was just going to, I want to skip to Ingrid because I've, I've already had a chance to talk, um, but I just want to say very quickly that also a lot of this functionality already exists inside Categora Trove, and a lot of us already have directories there. And I mean, I remember Grace mentioning at a recent flotilla call, it, you know, could we get this more integrated? Could we have more AI? Do I have to enter all my profile information yet again? And to me, these are short-term. When I hear that, I'm like, okay, we have short-term. <laughs> And we have long-term and AI is one of those things for me that's long-term, you know, um, and, and I don't want to wait. F- I, some of this stuff isn't that complicated, right? And, and we could get it easier and faster um, if we're willing to compromise a bit on functionality and, 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 and willing to deal with a little bit more friction. Um, and I think Categora is already built out and it would be an easy, an easy way to, to use something sooner. Anyway, I'll, I'll let Ingrid go. Cool. Thanks. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, I'm new to this, and uh, I, I don't know if this has been covered or not or, or how I got here, but hey, I just was thinking, is there, what I feel like, and I come and go in the in the calls every week, so right, I'm not the expert on this, but it feels like at the end of the week, we will just go back to another free-flowing conversation the next time, and there's no continuity between any of the conversations. And I feel like, okay, look, I'm coming from a very like practical project manager perspective, but at the end we would have a follow-up steps. And I know this is really rudimentary, but we would have, what are our blockers? What are people needing? What, you know, and I know we have the Google group where some of that is discussed, but is there a way to make it more apparent somewhere? And I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna throw it out there. I remember about six months ago, I said, I want to share my deck with a bunch of people. I sent it and I didn't hear, it was crickets afterwards. I don't know if it went to people's spam or what happened, but it kind of made me think, do I bother people about this? What what is the end goal of this group? Are we, how are we helping each other? Because the conversation, I mean, it's a bunch of brilliant people, but if there's sort of no directive at the end or what is our next concrete thing we're doing with this information or, or what are our blockers? How do we help each other? And I don't know if I'm completely off on a tangent or not right now, but these are kinds of the things that I think about because I feel like there's so much knowledge and every time I go, there's so much potential, but how do we tap it? You know? Um, <clears throat> I agree entirely. And uh, Michael, do you have your hand up from before? But you're mm-hmm. muted. I did want to say, you know, to this this point of our overlapping flotilla, I, I, you know, I get that. I'm I'm trying to think of ways that we can, and this is what Vincent and I were referring to in this conversation we had, something that isn't of Trove slash Categora, of, Google groups of factor of, you know, massive wiki of this one thing. Oh, you should all go to this one thing. That's the thing, but rather something that was sort of flatter and more interoperable that, that pushed you. If there was something on Trove, it pushed you to Trove. There was something on factor, it pushed you to factor, et cetera. Um, So I just, you know, I, I do, we are overlapping Flotilla, but you know, I've been going to Flotilla for a year and it's awesome and I love it and I come back every Friday, but we're not, we're not yielding anything interoperable yet. And I don't mean this to be like alternative Flotilla world. It's like we have to, we and Flotilla still have this, I think short-term goal of, and and honestly, I'd say the Plex newsletter is sort of one of the first things that sort of not, it's, it's everything and nothing, you know, it's just a simple, hey, this is, this is what unites us. This is what connects us as opposed to, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. That's all I meant. Um, I, I will dig up the, you just basically sign up to Ghost, which is the service that Pete is using, I'll find the link or someone else will find the link, Ingrid, and put it in the chat. Um, And I I put myself in the queue here because I wanted to add two things to the conversation. 
One of them is relative to what uh, Michael just said about not one platform, not one tool. And here, my, sh my shorthand for this is um, uh, separating the data from the apps. And uh, I have an unfinished essay in, in open in a tab in my browser that has too many tabs open, but it's called data is the new soil because I can't stand the data is the new oil trope. I hate it. It, it, it involves, hey, we should extract it, protect it, sell it off. Like this, this data, all of these people's personal info is exactly where we're gonna make a fortune coming up. And I, I just can't stand that. And if I flip it on its head and say data is the new soil, then hey, guess what? Fertile, healthy soil is the commons. And if we can figure out how to meld and match our data so that we have access control and privacy still, and yet, things that need to aggregate up, aggregate out of this healthy soil layer, wouldn't that be cool? So right now the brain has its own proprietary little data storage format. So does Kumu, so does MindJet, so does whatever. What if we separated those things? And when I was looking at the healthy soil layer through the brain, I would see things you know, visualized as, as brain links and so forth. But, but then, and then if I curated a link that talks about platforms and then Rob came in and looked at that same link with a different tool, he would see any upgrades, any, any benefit I had wrought to that particular node. And, and we don't have this in the world, it doesn't exist, but there's some really simple ways of doing this. So I posted in the chat kind of half jokingly that um, Derek Sivers wrote an essay some time ago and he said, I'm doing a now page. I'm tired of really long signature files on everybody's email. So slash now is like the, you know, in your, in your root directory slash now is what am I up to now? So I picked that up and um, I have a now page, which I put a link to uh, there, which I, I, I don't update often enough. I just updated it a couple of days ago. But if the now pages are in Markdown, they're roll upable into anything you want as a, as a profile manager or as a database or whatever. And if they had a little bit of metadata, you could pick up, you could hoover up any mark, any slash now page that was registered with a directory or whatever, and that might work. So, and then the other problem is lots of people want very different things in their profiles. Like I don't want my now page to have anything you could go discover on my LinkedIn page because that's where I put my resume. And I just spent a bunch of time learning how to upgrade that. And it, it's, it's now a good reflection of where I've been and what I've done professionally, awesome. Please go there and don't ask me ever to enter that information again. So that's one thought, sorry. And the second thought is, I have this incredible frustration all along through OGM. And I think Mark Carranza has it too, because he and I are the only two people I know who were busy during all of our calls, squirreling away what we learn, what we see, all the great nuggets, all the great links off of our emails, off of Mattermost. I have a place to put them all and I put them all in that place and everything has a home and it's a little bit messy, but actually shockingly useful. And I can't play with anybody else in it because it's a proprietary tool and we still haven't built this next platform, but I'm busy doing that organizing from my little perspective, my little porthole onto this vast world that we have together. And I wish that more of us could be doing the same thing with whatever tool they love into this healthy layer of soil, right? And, and that, and, and then, task lists and project lists and project updates could roll out of the healthy layer of soil because it's basically a query on top of what you know exists out on the soil layer. Um, <clears throat> and the analogy I use here is uh, when you click on a web page, on a link on a web page anywhere, it sends a message out to a, to a bunch of servers around the world that, and says, hey, send this specific file over to Jerry's browser. Do that really fast now. And then my browser catches all these bits from all around the world uh, assembles them and presents them to me really nicely. That's how the web works, period. <clears throat> Why doesn't my brain work that way? The wet one, the, the, the non-wet one, the outboard one. Why doesn't this shared memory just let you have tuples and, and interesting information bits that, that are in this healthy layer of soil distributed? <clears throat> and then when I need to collect them up, it says, here's what meets the criteria you just asked for and presents it to me in my favorite view master view, right? And, and, and and I love, and Rob, my, my heart aches because I love the sense-making part of what we do. And I feel like I'm busy on the side behind the curtain sense-making as hard as I can actually. I think I blew someone's mind yesterday because I had a call with uh, Lisa Sarsfield, Sarsfeld, who's the sort of co-founder co of system.com. And she's done a whole bunch of different design things. And system.com is a very, very OGME initiative that has a map of, of issues and all that kind of stuff. And I think I exploded her brain because I started going a little too fast. Of course, you all know that I never do that. 
Um, but I started going a little too fast through these things, just excited about the possibility of what's, you know, what, what's, what's at hand. Um, but I'm not sure how to leap from, <clears throat> from the little different separate efforts we have going now into this more integrated space where, sorry, I'll add a third thought, where we can switch from asynchronous to synchronous, where we can figure out who to talk to and then send them something in their preferred method of communication, where there's a place to hang out <clears throat> in text and there's a place to hang out in the Zooms and, and, and uh, Topias or whatever else is. That would be really a wonderful way that we can then find our way through to uh, the people and the things that we want to know about. That's all I got. Grace, then Michael. Okay. I would love to stay on this call because I love you all very much and it's interesting. Are you However, drunk? <laughs> not, I am not drunk, but I am quite hungover. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> but but the reason that I'm going to leave is I'm very stressed for time because I've been spending all week supporting my friend and I'm behind on my deadlines one and two the outcome of this call is poorly defined and normally I would love to be on this call because I just love chatting with you but the outcome of the call is poorly defined and it's not a good use of our time and I would say that probably the best use of the time of this call right now is to clearly define what what is it we're up to that's not flotilla? Who might take some stewardship and accountability? Because there's no accountability here. That's what's missing. It's like, who's saying, I'm the one to go? Because I can tell you this campus is going to happen because I've drawn a line in the sand and I'm accountable for it. And I will invite you all into it. And the, and the matter most, I moved into the matter most, my people into the matter most, because I knew somebody was accountable. And, and that's all there is. Like, who's accountable for what? in terms of what this call is about. And I can tell you it's not me. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, Grace. And good <laughs> luck helping your friend. Thank you. Mr. Grossman. Muted. You're muted. You're unmuting. Yeah. Um, well, I, I concur perhaps less bluntly, you know, with, with uh, what Grace was saying about not really being sure what our goal is, you know, what we're, what we're trying to walk out of this meeting with, or, you know, whether this is the first of a series on what exactly. I, I, I didn't have a clear picture, um, I admit. Um, and it's a great group. Um, and, the thing that I had my hand up for was um, just that I, I mentioned something in the text about this um, interaction we had on Flotilla today, the Flotilla call about um, putting information in uh, simple spreadsheets for the purpose of it yielding um, you know, yielding files in different, you know, a CSV file that could be displayed in different ways on different platforms and with different aspects of it displayed or left out and be therefore um, easily searchable and updatable kind of, I mean, I think, I think the big thing that we're struggling with and missing here is that when I want to send you an email, I don't have to ask what your preferred email address is, or what your preferred, you know, email platform is, and be also on that platform. My email, you know, or if I want to send you a JPEG, or if I want to send you, you know, if you have an address card or an event item, you know, I can put it in my calendar, even if we don't use the same kind of calendar, and we need the dot profile and the dot, you know, information bit and the dot, you know, the, the, the formats that are interoperable that allow us to, to share information seamlessly, whatever platform we're on the way we can with email and we don't have, it. Um, and I <laughs> would love to say, I take accountability for that and I will take care of it, but you know, it's not for any one of us to do. Um, but I do want to ask the question of exactly, you know, of, of, of Jerry and Stacy, I guess, what our objective is. And 
So I'll yield and see Stacey has her hand up and it's probably what she's gonna say. Yeah, so my objective is totally opposite than everything that's been discussed <laughs> because um, I really, I my hand up. I'm really interested in the social component. I wanna meet you people. I wanna talk to you about, I wanna hear your opinions. Um, more towards what Rob was saying about the sense making. Um, I just don't want to sit at the typewriter and write these long emails and it's just it's just not enjoyable for me. I'd rather know that we can come to the room and, you know, again, the threads on Ukraine, the threads on sense making, let's talk about it. I want to be able to ask, well, what do you mean? Why did why did you do that? Oh, we did this here. Oh, how did that work? So my intention was to really find out maybe even two, two main things that at least the people here were interested in. And then we could, I had in mind, I was like envisioning some sort of like a panel discussion where maybe we reach out to one or two people that are known to have, you know, more of an expertise in a certain area. And then I would reach out, I would be willing to reach out to them and see, you know, see when is good for them and then just advertise this call will be done here. So I just really wanted to know one or two things that you were interested in talking about and then maybe gather six people to do it and see what evolves. Yeah, panel discussion on topics, exactly. So that's where I was starting from, just. <clears throat> and sort of booking a call series. Yeah. Is maybe a simple way of describing it. Right, but starting with one or two would have been fine. And I just wanted to hear what people are interested in talking about. No more technology. I don't want to talk. <laughs> you can do that on Flotilla and all these other calls. I just want to know people. <laughs> uh, Wendy, then Rob. Yeah, thanks, Stacey, for bringing us back to the uh, the human connection, which is where this you know, starts and ends always, right? Um, so that made my brain go in a completely different direction. And now I don't, I, I think I need to think about what my next comment's going to be. So I'll pass to Rob. Yeah, I mean, I like the the continued push towards, towards humanity, towards uh, getting to know each other and interacting. I guess my my hope is some melding of the two because I think in in the in the video chats, at least when there's 20 people and Jerry does his best to bring people in, facilitate and do whatever, but I often feel like people are saying the thing that they want to say, even if it's out of the flow of the conversation. They have some point to get across, some author to quote, some whatever. And I forgot who said that the starts over week upon week. I think Ingrid said that. And I feel like I, I want some layers of context on a topic to build. And I'm interested in knowing whether people agree or disagree with certain, you know, let's say we're talking about Ukraine, um, you know, you know, I don't, I don't happen to think Putin is crazy. He's well, well, that opens a whole can of worms, but I think he's crazy for different reasons than he's commonly said to be crazy for. Uh, obviously, anyone who attacks another country has some kind of crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, is the Russian military doing a good job or not a good job? Is does Ukraine have a chance of winning, which was in some of the email threads? And what does that even mean? I think those are hard to do in a panel discussion. So I want some amount of uh, not just text, not just emails. I can't read the six paragraph emails that sometimes come out, but some, um, some something that has an anchor thought that then people can respond to, agree to, plus one, minus one, so I think it's a tool that doesn't exist, but I'm, I'm sure I would find, Stacey, the, the panels very, very interesting. I don't know if they would 
I don't know if they would be lasting into the next month and the next month and the next month. And so that, I don't know, a couple of different thoughts there. Thanks, Ron. Wendy, can I just add something real quick? Because again, there's different situations. So when I talk about a panel, it's like there had been one conversation about sense making. And like Jerry and I were discussing two people that had these different approaches. And I said, it would be really interesting to invite right. them to a call because it's not just the call for the sake of the discussion, it's also to start connecting with other people, even outside of OGM. So there's always, you know, there's more right. than one reason in different formats for different calls. And I think my point is to have some some fabric of all of that persist. Right. Yeah, and so I hear. Um... There's a lot of value, I think, in people just being able to have pop-up conversations. And I hear Pete Kaminsky in my ear going, if it turns into a really great conversation, we want a recording and a transcript of that, right? And that will, and that when the next conversation happens and half the group doesn't understand the conversation that just took place two days ago and like the happy hour, Zoom, open Zoom, we're all gonna feel like we're missing out on something, which is fine if we structure it that way, as we build community, we can say, hey, here's, here's a conversation that began in one place and, and we think it's rich enough that we wanna recap it and continue. So I'm not saying that that's bad to have like a hope and open happy hour. We just need to recognize the fact that in some of those places, if we're encouraging more like group conversation that isn't facilitated or isn't, um, isn't captured for a repository that we we lose a little of the sense making that we have a way to wrap that back in should we want to um and and i think that's just like the the little note of a uh, little flag to be paying attention to on that on that front and it made me think jerry when you move to the thursday calls being alternating people checking in with a topic i think in my mind I was, I was hoping or assuming that the topic days would not really be op necessarily open topics. They would like open for um, people to contribute topics. It would be more of a continuation, right? It would be the few people that are in more of the, of the conversations in general saying, okay, we're, we're seeing this emerge and we want to pick up from something that happened six weeks ago and carry it forward. Or we want it right. So it starts to build and it starts to morph and it still has the ability to take a quick right turn. If something urgent happens, or if there's something in the world that we want to talk about, but that, that, that there's someone holding on to, or a group of people holding on to a thread that, have, that weaves its way throughout the course of the year. I would find really rich and valuable. Um, and I know that started to happen around the betterverse conversations and 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 things related to it. And I would I would love like a web page that was a that showed that thread so that for people who weren't familiar with the conversation, they could they could follow that. So in my mind, thinking, thinking in the Trove Categora world, I could see that being a project in and of itself that had its own its own thread of events, you know, so that people could go to that page and go, oh, there's like something, there's something bigger happening here and add in resources and add in comments and uh, it could build on itself. Um, that's kind of what I'm picturing. I also put in the chat in terms of an objective for this group. Um, I can easily see this group say, pulling, putting together, and I'm happy to facilitate this, putting together a decision matrix where we would put the features and things that we've been talking about today as, as criteria across the top of the spreadsheet. And then the different platforms or, or Zoom chats or whatever the ideas are that we have down the side. And some are gonna be long-term and some are gonna be short-term. And that can be one of our criteria is this a short-term or long-term kind of thing, trying to get something AI built. Like if we keep waiting for the long-term ideal versions, I think I kind of snarkily put in chat that like, and we have nothing. Like we keep waiting for the better version. And if we keep waiting for the better version, we, we end up not having what's I think 
obvious, but at the same time, I don't want to make a decision that this to, 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 um, Michael's point that this is the best platform. Cause it's not, but if a group of us go, this is, you know what, this is the best platform for the short term. And we recognize that long-term and it doesn't mean everyone has to use it, but it's good for the moment, or we want to use it this way. We want to use this platform for this and this platform for this. And that's what our community is going to do for the short term. And hopefully, and please make your suggestions and we'll consider it for the long term, right? And so that it's not, um, we're not always waiting. Um, my head is full. Uh, so several different things. Uh, if, if my Patreon intake had another zero on it, or if the meta project had taken off and had funded our entire ecosystem so that there was some revenue trickling into each of us to play our particular roles in this broader ecosystem, it would nothing would make me happier than to be spending a whole bunch of my time uh, hosting or helping organize a variety of different threads on regenerative agriculture, the food system, the, all the, the, the Klaus and Sam and everybody else conversation on wealth, money, uh, value, how value flows through ecosystems, what platforms are helping people do that. It's a, there's a rich, beautiful conversation in the middle of which Grace floated um, her documents about, hey, this is a project I'm trying to form up. Like, is anybody interested, right? And the way we would be organized would allow us to go find those things and then say, Grace, I'd love to help. How do I jump into a separate thread, which is more specific that you host? It's more specific about your project and the thing you're trying to do. Um, and I, I would love to see that happen. And, and then behind each of these projects, there would be a series of pages. Uh, it's, it's like the internet's just a series of tubes, right? <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, th there'd be places for these conversations, for the resources in a technical sense, the way we were just talking about. And, and Wendy, we did sort of make some assumptions about platforms early on in OGM, uh, uh, one of which notably failed, which was discourse. Um, and it probably failed because of me. And it was, you know, if Pete had his druthers, there'd be no Google group. There would be a, a, a Mattermost server and a discourse server, and I don't know what else, uh, and, and, and maybe some other stuff, but I'm not sure, and, and a wiki actually. And we'd all be using Obsidian to edit like wiki pages together. Um, I happen to really like Google groups and it's unfortunately too frothy. Rob tried bravely, valiantly, and patiently to draw us over into discourse. Um, and, and it worked for a few people. I, I just never had time to make the rounds. So I kind of do the rounds all day long and that just eats my day from all the different platforms and all the different conversations and all the different projects. And the more anybody floats up a brand new project, which is a thing Pete loves to do, the more I get distracted by what was the name of that damn thing and where is its conversation and how does it fit into the puzzle, right? And, and so I, I get a little... I get a little freaked out when the number of things explodes. And at this point, I've taken my hand off the tiller so badly on my own revenues that I cannot, in fact, go host a whole series of new conversations, which I would love to host and curate because I don't, I'm not interested in like between two ferns happening, you know, over and over again over time. I'm really interested in a thread that builds every time, that makes things better. Every, every time three minds get together and have a conversation that that is like digested, mulched up. And, and improves the shared assets that we have about that question, about whatever the hell is going on there. I want that to happen. And we're not there, we're not doing that. And it's frustrating as hell, but we keep talking around it and trying and poking at it, right? We're, we're sort of nearby. And I'm really interested in going with Jordan to pitch a couple high net worth individuals and say, hey, would you pour $25 million into this flotilla of entities and I'm not sure that that would actually free us up to go solve these problems yet. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure we have any good decision model for, hey, let's, you know, Reed Hoffman's just dropped 25 million into the, into the shared pot. What is our criterion? What are our criteria for divvying that up and allocating that to projects? How does that work? We don't, we would be in trouble in, in an instant there, right? Um, and so I think this is difficult. And we're, we're, we are evidence that this is difficult. I think I love our intentions and each of us cares a lot about a, a, an overlappy set of, of, of principles and forces and things that, that matter here. And I'd love to find our way towards solutions. I'm not, I don't think I'm anywhere near as pessimistic as what I just said sounds. Um, I think I, I remain a complete optimist. And I think that if we, and, and 
my experience of the last two years of all of our conversations is in the free jury's brain calls on Mondays, for example, we break a bunch of stuff open that changes how I think. And I'm like, oh man, I'm so glad we had that conversation. I didn't know where we were going. And then we, we dissolved something in the middle. And my ability to explain something that, that might fit together now is only based on slow and patient conversation in all these different places where we meet and, and harvesting and connecting and collecting from, from what everybody else is coming up with. So, so we don't have the medium yet to actually do this together. And I'd love us, I'd love us to have it. Mr. Grossman. Sorry, my mouse isn't working well. It's hard to get to the unmute button. Um, what, what I was gonna say is, is not, not as, as lofty, but is picking up on what Wendy was mentioning about the, um, the subject, uh, the topic calls or it's just the check-in calls and, and relating it to what Stacy and all of us have been talking about, about the, the live, um, you know, the moments where we have a discussion that grows out of a battermost thread or some group of us goes to a breakout room from a meeting. I think like this is partly the tyranny of of Zoom, but you know, every meeting is pretty much like every other. Um, there, there really isn't a tremendously different format in a sense that, oh, you know, this is this event. And I do wonder, and this is Wendy, I thought this is what you were gonna say when you talked about the difference between a check-in meeting and a, and a topic meeting. I've always wondered if we could have topic meetings that really handed the floor to one person or one you know small panel of people to dive deep on a subject um, and you know have it have it be more like I mean you see this in other virtual gatherings on the web oh you know um, Ethan Zuckerman is presenting to, you know, Doc Searle's group like a couple of Mondays ago. I showed up for that. You know, Ethan said some stuff. There was a QA. and a you know, I can't remember if there were breakout rooms or not, but I've been to events where there were. But like that was a thing. And the fact that it focused on one issue, one person and what they had to say um, was a galvanizing thing, probably brought the following of that person who would not be, you know, maybe not an OGM person to this event. There's some cross pollination. That's a cool thing. Um, and, and I'm just wondering if like that might be one sort of call. The general check-in might be one sort of call. Um, the 24 hour drop in when you feel like it bar confessional thing. Well, like the confessional. Like, what's that? I like the confessional idea. That's great. <laughs> Bless me, Stacy, for I have sinned. <laughs> I will um, sin for that. <laughs> and you know what? Bless Stacy will absolve anyone. <laughs> almost. All, almost all sins are forgiven. <laughs> Except for those few. Sorry, Michael, go ahead. How many, how many Hail Wendy's do I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was awesome. Like lots. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought the hail, I thought that the like the market for hail Wendy's was was like going up and they're they're worth a lot now. So you don't have to do as many. Value, greater value. Yeah. Anyway, so you know, I I, th I think it's some greater contrast between the different things we're doing and having them, you know, it's funny you mentioned free Jerry's brain. I've heard that call mentioned, but I have no idea exactly when it is. So I've never been to one. And, you know, I would have showed up, I mean, and, and, and would show up. I mean, it's... I could swear I've seen you among the faces on Free Jerry's Brain on Monday. Not, not, a, free, not a Monday call. Shoot. And, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the, the only one of all these calls, at least the only one that I know of, that's kind of half hidden because the geeks would like to keep it at geek size and relatively uh, manageable that way. But, we, you know, love to have you there. Um, there is a Free Jerry's Brain channel on Mattermost right this minute the call schedules and Zooms are all at the top of each of the appropriate Mattermost channels. Oh, and that's, 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 and, and that's about the only place where they are, but that's where, the, that's where these calls are currently listed. Um, 
Uh, and then you said something along the way that I just want to reply to that's now flashed out of my head. Oh, so what you just described was precisely my intention with having grace lead us into the call about money. Like, and just rewind 10 minutes and replay what I said a moment ago. And in a, in, in a perfect world, that would have spun off into its own thread of calls that would be focused around money, wealth, value, and would be building and would be building assets and would go off into the sunset doing stuff. And I wouldn't necessarily be hosting or moderating it. There could be a rotating volunteer. And, and Stacy's efforts are to figure out what do we care about and who's willing to step up and moderate a series of conversations about any of these things. Um, I think, and I think that was a piece of the reason for this call it was like, like, okay, what's on our minds and what would we step up to go host? And, and I'm trying to figure out how to do that and how to have us all happily do that because we're making sense together and to stop having all these calls seem like they're the same. Right. And, and my switching back and forth between topic and check-in was actually an attempt to enforce a little bit of format shift on those weekly calls so that they would be a little bit distinctive. And I find them to be different, but not sharply. I mean, uh, you know, the, the check-in format is a different thing from the topic format and I treat it differently, but arguably from someone outside, you know, there was a photographer years ago who went around the world and she photographed different cliques. Like she had London skinheads with their spiky hairdos and she had a bunch of other cliques. And what was really interesting was that within a clique, there was extremely little variance from the costume. Everybody was within the costume. Across the cliques, the costumes were dramatically different, but the degree of conformity, even inside non-conformist cliques was really shocking, was really beautiful. Yeah, I just wanna highlight something else that Rob said. He mentioned how like sometimes it feels like people just come there with something to say and whether or not it flows. And I just want to acknowledge that because that's part of what we, I mean, we have a need to be heard. And unfortunately, some people just get it in whenever they can. So if something were set up in a way that, you know, after listening to someone, then you are encouraged to give your opinion, you're still giving a piece of yourself. And that also connects to something that Ingrid had put um, about how we're not the same as we, pre as we present professionally. We should be. <laughs> I mean, I want a world where we're the same wherever we go. And conversations and getting to know people is what helps us to move in that direction. We've run an hour, which is the time we had set up for this. Um, I'm wondering if anybody would love to sort of recap where we are or your desires for this. Um, Wendy, you're welcome to jump in with what you're about to say, but I just wanted to focus us back on um, is there an outcome from our conversation? Yeah, I mean, I just, so I just put in trying to categorize the best I could, just the four different types of calls that I heard, which could actually be rotated every month, you know? And so that, um, we're not just talking about one type, we're talking about four different types, or we could talk about doing two two things together in one call, just making it a little more structured. That's another way to do it, right? Like, the first hour is check-in and then the, the half hour that follows for people who want to stay is a presentation on something specific, right? Which sounds a little, starting to sound a little Kiko lab, you know, that's the, you know, following that model. Hot, that, hot seat. Yeah. Give people a hot seat. Um, yeah. I, I, I honestly think, you know, I'm going back to the matrix or something else. It, it's how do we, to me, it's all these ideas are great. All the stuff we've brought up is great. Which one do we want to take action on? Do we want to do something together as a group? Do we want to advance something um, um, sooner rather than later? Do we want to, I mean, the meta project and the money there, I, I feel so much potential is there too, but it will be, it'll take a while. Um, and, um, and I think it's struggling with the exact, that, that project in and of itself is struggling with the same things that we're talking about, right? This is not unique. So anything that I think we can do to help further evolve OGM into something that serves more people more regularly, including Jerry and Pete and Stacy, who are at the core, um, I think will advance our experience, potentially has the advance of uh, 
has the potential of advancing our experiences in all the communities that we're taking part in. So from my perspective, it's time where time well spent because they're informing each other, these conversations in different, in different spaces. Um, so I'm happy to continue to engage in this conversation if other people find it valuable. Um, and I think it is important to start saying, do we want to, do we want to just talk about it and see what next week's topic is going to be and agree together what next week's topic is going to be? Or do we want to really talk about a new infrastructure for how we're going to manage the entire community as a whole? Those are very different levels of work and, and action. Thanks, Wendy. Ingrid, do you want to say a little bit about what you put in the chat? You know, I was just thinking because if everyone had to um, write what they wanted to discuss before and present it to everyone, then we wouldn't, and I know there's still, we, we could still have free flowing conversation, but you would have to say, I'm going to talk about X at our call. You know, whether it's a presentation or whatever you thought about or, or the Ukraine or whatever it was, but then people could know what was coming and then they have to present that because I feel like a lot of the conversations seem to just go circular or people, it goes really off, not even into projects, but just opinion and which is fine if that's what you want, but it sounds like that's not what we want to be. So something just more focused is, you know. Mm -hmm. If we had the vaunted dashboard we keep talking about, then the check-in calls would be a matter of browsing the dashboard. And Rob would show up and say, yeah, yeah, I'll check in. And then we would zoom over to Rob's entry in the dashboard, which anybody could have seen at any moment, you know, 24 seven, which had a paragraph that says, this is roughly where we are right now. And then our conversation could leap like way forward. And he could say, here are the things that are blocking me. Here's a couple of things that I'm stuck on. And we, he wouldn't have to re-explain the project, like none of that, right? Uh, and, and like Kevin Jones, every time he does, he checks in on the check-in thing, he's like, I, you know, we're doing this projects for, for, and, and there's, there's 50% of what, what he has to say is just a reset for the people who missed him or don't remember of what he's up to. But if we were sort of moving the spotlight around the dashboard, that problem starts to dissolve and we then get to do a little more productive work together. So I'd, I'd love that. It becomes a thread, you know? Yeah. 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 It's a boundary object. The the dashboard becomes this boundary object between our different communities, which is really useful. And, and, I would love to be using Airtable or, or Trove slash Catalunt or, or whatever uh, to do some of this. I just don't know exactly how. There's also something else that I'm interested in. And it, uh, uh, Doug Carmichael, he had mentioned, you know, if we looked at this like a mission and I'm sort of wanting a play space to go where we say, all right, like just the way he phrased it, you know, we had to get rid of uh, carbon emissions. So what will that mean to this? And if we were just like, all right, well, if this, then that, oh yeah, but this wouldn't work because, okay, well, what about if we did this? I'm not articulating it well, but I'm looking for a play space where we can use our ideas and bounce them off each other. So there, um... There are things out there that do these kinds of things from world building games like SimCity and whatnot to the world game that Bucky Fuller created. Somebody has to have riffed on the world game so that we could actually like step into it and play with these variables because just sitting and having a conversation around it is really different from an environment that somebody has architected where you can turn knobs and run a simulation that, 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 that actually starts to make changes. Uh, there are business school simulation games where you do competitive startups and you compete for funding or, or resources. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that that could easily be brought in as tools. We're sort of not using a lot of simulation or sense-making tools in our conversations at all. We're not, we're not making use of what's out there. Wendy? First, Stacey, I just want to clarify. It, did you really, when you say play space, I wasn't actually thinking game, like, in, like technolo technological game spaces. I'm assuming no. you were not either. I was, I was like, basically we're sitting here. Okay, people, let's make a list. What are the six topics, you know, what are the six things that we need to, you know, fix? You yeah. know, just you mean, doing it. Just, yeah, you mean like playing in the sandbox together and figuring correct. it out. Yeah. Correct. correct. Yeah, and to me, that's that, those are those conversations, those topic conversations that, you know, whether it's about money or it's about regenerative agriculture, 
I don't, you know, it's, it's subgroups. I see them as subgroups of OGM potentially, and just having an ability to, to say, like, I, I don't know how we decide this as a group, right? Which I think is what keeps us from doing it. But we say, okay, great. We, someone within OGM is going to help facilitate, and this probably needs money, right? Just so that someone can play this role. We're going to facilitate, make it easy for you, Grace, to hold meetings every week for the next four weeks, right? To, to gather people together who are interested in talking about money um, at our, who've already gone through your course or already have some background who want to really play and start solving some of these things to come together for four weeks and see what you can do right? And see what comes out the other side and then bringing whatever the, 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 um, the learnings are back to the regular group and then doing one of the weekly major presentations. This is what we've been working on. And this is what, you know, as a group, so I can easily see that happening. I've worked in organizations where that sort of happens, except for that there's no, there's usually not a very good feedback loop. I don't see any problem with creating one though. It's just, we need someone who facilitates all of that happening because as Grace mentioned, you can't, have the time to hold those conversations and and be the one scheduling, organizing, repository, and curating, right? It's just too much. Um, a couple of things, then I'm gonna have to drop off the call. Um, so putting four of us in a room and saying, how would you solve the energy crisis? Sounds like fun. <laughs> and, and this isn't a critique of what you said. I'm trying to figure out a, a really productive way to do the thing you said. Yeah. No, so I I we're, we're amateurs and we've got a couple ideas about this and that's great. And we would have a fun time doing it. I'm two degrees from Saul Griffith. I'm sure I could invite him into a conversation. I've met Ramez Nam. There's a bunch of other people whose work on the future of energy is top-notch, world-class, really brilliant. It would be fun. And here I realized we're just talking about weaving the world and what I really wanted to do in yes. weaving the world is like, let's bring some of them in. Let's then use some of our sense-making tools to actually take what they're saying. And instead of it being showing up in a bunch of YouTube videos and PowerPoint decks, if you're lucky, let's convert it over into a shared space of knowing what we know and setting up better questions. Yes. So, that, so, that, so that the question of, hey, uh, you know, hey, everybody, solar energy sounds so attractive, but when you make solar panels, you have to buy unobtainium and blood diamonds. It's like, okay, good. How do we factor these kinds of things into an ongoing, ever improving map of the issues that other people then start to use? Um, and I think that that's possible, but a lot of work. And the, part of the reason I wish the Meta Project would find funding, and I'm happy to help, is that we need that kind of that level of funding to actually push through and start doing this kind of work. But I really want to do this kind of work. I would be thrilled. I would be thrilled to be a agent provocateur and a sense maker in the middle of a community that is doing this kind of work together and splitting off into sub branches and coming back into conversations and solving stuff and making it better and not repeating the same conversation over and over again. Wendy, the oh my god, oh my god, yes, like <laughs> that is exactly right. That's exactly it from my perspective as well. And so let maybe this group could create a project plan for that and present that to Jordan or, right? Let's do that. That's all. <laughs> because I, I, said, you said I see it. You said using our sense-making tools. What, what did you have in mind when you said that? What are, what are our sense-making tools? Well, so right this minute I use the brain and I want to be using a different platform. And We've made some progress in free Jerry's brain toward freeing me from Jerry's brain, but not, not, we haven't completed that. I can't, I can't swing to a different vine that's open and, and collaborative, but I want to. Uh, but if we had some funding, I think there's three or four things we could build that actually would let me swing over and, and, and climb onto that. Then anybody else who wants to play uh, and help enrich the, the data soil uh, could do that. And they could do that from their own set of tools, because if we have a separate data layer, uh, you know, a separate da data layer to enrich, then that actually works. Well, can I just, I just add in, um, I've been connecting with Geary um, and his indie lab and stuff. And I think he's advanced that a lot. And that's my hope is that it's kind of the infrastructure that we need to create that kind of platform. Which one is that, Wendy? Geary Lagros. I, yeah. Um, 
he's doing he's doing a project he's called Indie Lab, which is an IPFS based um, hollow chain like, and here's where my experience with technology is not going to let me describe it very well, but I saw a, a demo of it and it's, it has the potential to do everything that we were just talking about. I put a right? link to his GitHub repo in the chat. Um, and I've got Thank a you. bounce, so I think I'll pass the con to whoever of you would like to have the con passed, but I have to be on a call in a couple minutes. Um, uh, I'll help wrap it up if you want to pass it. Thanks. Yeah. All set. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> so that cut my train of thought, but, um, but I just feel like there is stuff right at the edges, right at the right. edges that's waiting. Now, is it ready? Is it, would it be ready next week? No, right? These are the long-term views. And I do think that we can do something short-term, but this long-term stuff, Long-term could be six months. It could be two years. I'm not sure. Certainly needs support, funding support, people support. And the question is, I think for, it could be for OGM, do we want to start being shepherds for some of this longer-term vision? First, we have to agree on what we would like to have a longer-term vision of. And then it's a question of these projects. I'm sure we would get flooded with ideas, which it would be fun. And then how do we make decisions, right? How do we, and that's rife with a lot of issues. Um, would we want to do that? That's, you know, anyway. That's well, hey, exciting. I mean, someone has to kind of be a little bit of a dictator in some way because um, I don't know. I think there has to be a focus lead. I think it may be a little bit too much. I don't know how to say it, but like in the Dutch method, it's the polder method where everyone has equal say. So it kind of becomes then this amorphous thing, right? So Who's going to make the decision yeah. on where we're going? It, it it can't be sort of like 20 people. It really has to be, is it Jerry? You know, what? Who gets, you know, who gets to say yes or no to yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, it has to be dictatorship. That's a strong word, but I'm just saying there has got to be a, you know, a strong vision and execution of whatever that is, you know? Yeah, that's interesting that you bring that up. Because to me, that's where the decision matrix comes in. I don't have a better example for it. So I'm just going to refer to that where actually it is the, the group, just the group. So let's say it's a core group. Let's say it's 20 people. I think that's a little high, but let's say it's 20 people. Even the core group decides the features. They decide the projects under consideration for the moment. And it's a, a ever morphing document that then gets rated. Each person gets a chance to rate every project as to its fit to the features and, and values that they want to see for OGM in this case. And then whatever projects come up with the highest score gets then re, you know, gets then discussed and decided upon. It makes it much easier for people to see the value from the perspective of the whole group instead of the value just from my perspective or the value just from the perspective who, of the person who's giving the funding. Right, so it is a tool that has been used many, many times in other in other communities that has great value and helping to provide collaborative value-based decisions that don't fray and create conflict within the group. Um, would it work? I think under facilitation, it would work. Facilitation from people who use it on a regular basis, it would most definitely work. Um, is that something OGM wants to do? That's, you know, that's, that's a decision for, for us to make. Um, but it, it's, it, there is a path is what I'm, I'm just trying to give, shine some light on the fact that there's hope that there is a path that those kind of decisions can happen. And uh, I think it would be worth experimenting with. Um, and I know people who could facilitate it. I'm happy to facilitate it on the, on the beginning stages, but I think somebody with much more experience facilitating it would probably be wise if we're, if we're really going big with it. If we were going small with it, I'm sure I could, I could do good enough. Um, and if the group was just five or six of us, I'm sure it would be enough. But if the group gets bigger and the projects get bigger and the funding gets bigger, it's wise to probably have somebody who's facilitated it. But anyway, just to respond to your concern, which is an incredibly valid and important one, um, and recognizing that you usually the only way this stuff works is if there's kind of one person who 
makes well, the call. and also, yeah, I mean, the thing about a document or a, a, a digital workspace with everything on it is that there's transparency and there's you're able to actually see a decision tree. When we have conversations, it just becomes it, it, it loses its force somehow. Viral. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I, that's what I see when I join the calls, even though we love the sandbox, Stacey, and I think we can do that, even if we have some kind of directed way to do things, I, 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 I think we can still have the fun in the community, probably even better, actually, mm -hmm. because I think who said this, Michael, about there are a few people that I see that are really the conversation every time, but and they have great things to say, but it becomes their three people kind of chatting. And that's not the best thing, probably. Best use of everyone's time. Yeah. yeah. And it's not advancing the conversation at all, really. Yeah. So, Rob, I'd like to have the conversation of, is Putin a madman? If not, and if so, what would be the best way? And if not, what would be the best way? Because there is a need, at least for somebody like me, to strategize, to play, to discuss, to get to know people. Right. So it doesn't, you know, I understand there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but building relationships is really important. And to Ingrid, you know, just to your point, I know that I've watched it with Wendy, I've watched it with Jerry, I saw it with Grace, how people just really were there to listen and help them with their ideas. And I can tell you, it's because they knew them. It's because they knew them. Or when it's not that, it's because they're really interested in that project. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go. It's a little bit late and I've got to eat some dinner and stuff. Here Where are you, by the way? Where are I'm you? I'm in Amsterdam, so it's 9.30. But I, I don't know how I got invited, but thank you, Stacey. I, I, I love this group, and I, I really want to see it succeed. And thanks for letting me have a little tiny voice. <laughs> you, uh, before you go, Ingrid, I guess let's just do a quick like thumbs up if you think another call, and we'll be clear maybe up front what we want to achieve with that call and see what we can see if we can take a step forward in some direction. And maybe... Stacy, I'd be happy to have a side conversation with Jerry, you, the three of us, and going, what's like, try and hone in on what the objective is a bit, what he would like to see happen for OGM. Does that make sense I mean, to people? Yeah. I mean, maybe there could just be a little piece, which is like the more human piece. And I could just stay there because <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, even to be able to have invited Ingrid, that's what I want to do. Because now we, I mean, I don't know who knew her before or who you knew, but I know you better now. And that's important. Likewise. I like that. I do yeah. too. Um, so yes for another meeting or you're feeling like we'll just see each other at OGM calls. <laughs> I think there's a need for this. You guys, please. I think we should, I think we should. Yeah. I would say, I think it's going to not be good if it just keeps going on like this. I think it's not where Jerry wants it to be. I can sense his frustration, but anyway. Yeah. Okay. So let's try again. Right. I think we definitely got somewhere today um, and we'll try again for another one and see if we can advance it some more. Is this a good time or should I send out another uh, when not on a Friday? <laughs> yeah, I prefer not on a Friday, too. And there was another call scheduled about the book, Dawn of Everything, which may I, I don't know if it's going to be Is consistent that scheduled right now. Oh, I didn't want to miss that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he didn't get, well, and that was the thing, like, that was the kind of call that I would like to be part of what we're yeah. talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're having a call about how there could be more calls, like the call we have to miss by having this call. <laughs> 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 All right, well, I'm going to let you guys go to your call. Thank you. Then. Have a lovely bye. day. Nice bye. to see you. Thank All right, you. bye. We'll figure you out guys. some other, other time. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.